Hey guys, how's it going? So I'm behind the gazebo this morning getting ready to dig out some plants and transplant them to a different location in my garden. I'm so thankful that the gazebo removal project was bumped to the 1st of April. We expected it to leave the last week of February and I was starting to get a little bit bummed out because I knew that I didn't have enough time to get the plants dug up uh, that I wanted to save. But I think we're gonna be able to remove a few of them today. So. Japanese maple right here, double file viburnum. There are some hostas and hookerellas in here. I'm not as concerned about the smaller plants because they're easier to replace, like the smaller perennials, but I wanted to get some of these bigger plants moved. So we're gonna start with those. On this other side here, we've got some Empress Wu hostas. You can see where they were cut back there. There's a clematis. There are a couple hookerellas and these boxwoods, which these were here when we moved in. They're beautiful, I love them, and so we're gonna give it a shot. And the more mature and established things are, the riskier it is to move them clearly because they're so established where they're at. But you might remember the one boxwood that we dug up in our front flower beds. I think it was maybe the second season we were here. I think I did plant with them there in those front flower beds the first year. I think I put Supertinia Vista bubblegum in there along with, there was one side had a spiral and the other side had a, a squatty looking boxwood. It was very unbalanced. So we dug them out and I remember there were so many people who were like, you just killed that boxwood, it's gonna die. And honestly, I kind of thought, well, maybe it might <laughs> because we didn't, we didn't really try very hard to get much of a root ball, but it's still living. In fact, it's living in the exact container we planted it in. Isn't that amazing? It's a huge boxwood. I would like to get it out of this container. We'll probably pop it over in the new property somewhere. And then as far as the rest of this area goes back here, I don't know how disrupted these flower beds are gonna actually need to be um, because they have plenty of room to get equipment in here. They have this whole area back here. Like this whole area will be clear as well as the whole area around the front of the gazebo. So unless I need to, I would rather just leave the flower bed out there along the perimeter. I mean, it will probably change, but at least it'll give me more time to move the plants and they can look pretty for a while. <laughs> But before we start in on this project, because this is going to take a while, I do want to run into the studio. I need to uh, check all my seedlings out. I always check them in the morning and then check them again in the evening and kind of mess with whatever I need to mess with. I'll probably need to pop some windows open and help with airflow. I've actually been opening the garage door completely on nice days and just letting them kind of just all be open to the outside air. I think it's really good for them. But I have a microgreen project I've been working on that looks amazing right now that I want to show you. All right, here we are. I love that these lights are on timers. So they automatically come on early in the morning. We run them for 16 hours in a day. Um, but I do have a fan blowing on the seedlings. The fan is right there. And you can see, you can see when the fan goes by, which tends to dry soil out a little bit quicker. That's why I love the self-watered reservoirs on um, a lot of the stuff that, a lot of the trays that I plant and have that self-watering reservoir so it keeps them moist longer. Um, but some of them aren't in that so i need to check them frequently for water things are looking really good though snapdragons right there look at all those sweet peas down here got artichokes i have a couple of these yellow fungus snap traps out because i noticed a few but haven't had an issue really so i'm thankful look at these are the ones we recently started there's the mahogany splendor hibiscus and the serenth kiwi blue and over here look at my microgreens Aren't they gorgeous? These are kale, red Russian kale microgreens. Um, I've been growing them here for just a little while. They're super fast. I wanna say it's been like 10 days, something like that. Anyway, you can see that a lot of them have started to produce the their first set of true leaves. And that's usually the indication that they're ready to roll. They're ready to be harvested. So I wanna bring them over here and show you this method because I'm excited about it. So the thing that excites me about these microgreens, you can see I've got them in this green plastic tray and you can grow microgreens in anything. It's one of the easiest things to do. We've done a video about it a long time ago. It's probably one of our first videos, but um, you don't need to be fussy about what you're growing it in as long as it can hold a little bit of soil. You don't need to have grow lights. I had mine under a grow light because I had space for it and it does make them grow a little quicker, but it's completely unnecessary and it's a super quick turnaround crop. So typically within a week to two weeks, you've got a crop of microgreens that you're harvesting um, and they're super, super good for you and they're really tasty. They take on whatever taste you of the crop you're growing. So if you're growing microgreens for radishes, 
they have a radish taste. Beets taste like beets, kales, kale, broccoli, broccoli, and so forth. The thing that I love though, is that all of these, they're grown on a jute pad. See that, look at all those roots. There's no soil mess, which is amazing. So this is the pad right here, and you put it in one of these trays, and you get it wet, and then you pour your seeds in, which I have, this is what I have growing in this tray here, the Red Russian Kale. I picked up some radish seeds from the garden center, and then I've got broccoli microgreens. Um, but you just sprinkle the seeds on, and then it comes, I think, so this is a kit. Uh, that's what it looks like, we'll link it down below. I got it from Gardener Supply, but, um, so once you have your seeds in and you mist them, you put this over the top and let them germinate in darkness. And as soon as they're all germinated, you take the lid off and let them grow on. And then we don't have any mess. I can just cut these right off the jute pad. The jute pad replacements I think are like a dollar a piece or so, uh, but it's just so clean. Anyway, I was getting ready to harvest these greens. So I really wanted to show you because one, they're beautiful. And two, I was just so excited to discover a different way to grow them rather than on soil. Especially when they're in your kitchen because that's typically where we're growing these type of crops. It's nice to have them be grown super clean. Like if this falls on the floor, I mean it might wreck your greens a little bit but it's not gonna create a mess, which is awesome. Anyway, I was just excited to show you guys this crop because it's so pretty and it's early so it's nice to see anything that looks like this. Um, and it's nice to start off a project day with something pretty because now we're gonna go out and do the hard work. So let's head back outside. I do need to grab my stuff though. I'm gonna get a shovel, a couple shovels probably. Erin may come help me. Um, some biotone starter fertilizer, garden carts. Is there anything else I need? Not really, probably my pruners just in case. So I'll grab my Falcos. So we're by the back shade porch right now, and this is where I want to put the double file viburnum. But first we have to remove this Japanese maple. It was a Crimson Queen Japanese maple that I had there year before last. The whole top died out over the course of the winter. So I lopped it off and I let it live through last year, and it's only partially alive still. So I decided instead of limping this plant along, I'm going to remove that and I think it would be beautiful to let a viburnum fill in this space right here. I was kind of contemplating between that space and this one right here, kind of where, where the bird bath is, but I think I'm going to put that bird bath somewhere else. And then because the double file viburnum will get taller, I'll put something in that stays a little shorter so we can still see across because I really love to look across and see all that structure. So pretty, especially once those boxwoods become an actual hedge and it's starting to rain right now. I actually really wanted to plant seeds in the cut garden. In fact, I started the whole project a couple days ago and it's been so windy um, that I've kind of put it off and it's supposed to be really windy again tomorrow. And we're supposed to have thunderstorms tonight. So I decided to put it off again, but it's kind of a good day to transplant. It's nice and chilly, everything will hopefully, I don't know, it won't shock it quite as much. So when digging this out, it will create the perfect hole for our next plant. It's also a bit difficult because do you see all the green shoots? There are daffodils coming up everywhere in here. Like just everywhere. I think we planted, oh, I don't know, between maybe about 700 in this space. So yeah, hopefully I don't crush a whole bunch of them in this process.
Back behind the gazebo where the viburnum is, it's a pretty good size shrub. I just planted it there though. I think it was last spring. It was good size when I planted it. So I'm hoping it is not too hard to dig out. We'll throw a picture on the screen of what these look like when they're at least in bloom or a more mature specimen, but they have more of a wide than tall appearance and they have horizontal branching, which you can kind of see here. So the first thing I'm going to tackle before I even dig this out is to cut out the water sprouts out of the center here. So let me look a little closer. See those tall, lighter colored branches that are kind of growing up from the main stem and they're just growing straight up through the middle part of the shrub. I want to cut those out because they're going to kind of wreck the shape of the shrub and I want to keep it fairly open and architectural. So let's get our pruning done. Then I'm going to dig it out and move it. Oh my gosh, that looks so much better to have a shrub with a nice shape right there. And I can just imagine once it kind of, I mean, it doesn't even need to fill in, but if it gets a little bit bigger, especially like horizontally, I think that'll be absolutely fantastic in this spot. Now in the rest of this area, I've got some delphinium, some poppies. Um, there are some hookahs that are coming back. Uh, and then I've got hostas around the bird bath. I think I'm going to be bringing in some of the brunera that was underneath. They were underneath the pine trees. We got Benjamin out here helping me. In fact, let me show you where the brunera are. They're just such a beautiful perennial. I don't want to waste them. Okay, so the pine trees were right here. And I had just planted a bunch of brunera. You can see them kind of popping through. See that right there? There's, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six seven eight nine in this area yeah we gotta dig those up but i'm gonna focus on those japanese maples first and get those moved because they're a little bit bigger perennials are a little bit uh, more forgiving when you transplant them yes babe is that hard do you want me to help you open it up are you gonna spray me no i'm not are you sure no i'll, I'll not spray you okay i'm just kidding you're just kidding <laughs> turn on okay go to the, find the end of the hose see if it's on and tell me. Nice! You can drink out of that like a water fountain. So the Japanese maple that was right by the viburnum, this is a, I can't remember if this is an emperor one or a blood good. They look very similar. But I want to move it to the left side of the angel over here. So right in this vicinity. Because there is a red bud, a honey locust right there, it'll get beautiful morning sun and it'll be protected in the afternoon. So I think that'll be a good location for it. Got a few little bulbs and some salvia in this area. I'm thinking the hole will be about right where that salvia is. It's an old variety that always flops though, so I don't mind if I lose that. Benjamin, you wanna bring the hose over here and water these pots? You can't? Look, you can water these pots right here. It's way too far away. You just drag the hose. Like that. Uh huh. You want me to show you a trick? You can drag it behind you. See, if you grab it further down the line, then you can drag it like this along the ground behind you so you don't splatter yourself on accident. Yeah. So you gotta move the hose around just a little bit. See, like this? to make sure to get the back side too. No, I will do it. Okay. Okay, now try with this one, Benjamin. Remember to move the hose around a little bit so you get the back side too, bud. Great job. So 
look what we're doing, baby, right here. Oop. See, we're taking soil out like this. You can put it in this pile right here. Good job. We're taking on the whole tree? Yeah. Oh my goodness, I love it right there. I know it's a little bit hard to see right now without leaves, but I think it's gonna be beautiful because it'll kind of grace the side of the statue right here. Of course, everything will look better once the uh, covers are off the patio furniture. But, oh, it needed something right here. I've got a weeping Alaskan cedar, it's not happy. We've been having some issues with the drip in here. Um, so we're working on pulling it all up and we're gonna run brand new drip in a lot of our flower beds this spring. It's gonna be a big old project. We also turned on the pondless waterfall over here per Benjamin's request and it turned on without any issues whatsoever. Although I think I need to turn the hose off because I'm starting to overflow flow it. Look at that. The sound is wonderful. So we will most likely be relocating this to some other area of our property, but it's a kit. And so that's kind of the fun part. I got to help install it and watch it be installed. So I don't think it's gonna be super difficult to put this somewhere else if we need to for the Hartley. We do need to relocate a Japanese maple that was planted at the top. I believe that one is a blood good. And then there's another one right here, but I'm just gonna focus on the red leaved one right now um, because that will be in full sun now and it will not be happy, not here, unfortunately. So we'll get that one moved next. Benjamin, all we have left back here are little things, hostas and little plants to move. Well, except for the boxwoods, huh? We gotta move those. You want to go dig some more holes? What are you doing? Well, I'm working in the garden. What are you doing? Good. Good. Are you helping me or are you filming like your daddy does? I'm doing my daddy. Yeah. Okay, got this Japanese maple. Created quite the hole at the top of this fountain right here. But, oh, I love the sound. Oh, it's so nice. Okay, so we're back up by the original location where we put the viburnum. I'm thinking that we can put the Japanese maple right in here. I think that would be gorgeous. And honestly, I was kind of questioning the sun because we do have red point maples growing over here and the sun in the afternoon comes this direction, kind of comes underneath the juniper. But we grew caladiums in this spot last year and they did beautifully. So I think, I think Japanese maple will do really well. Yeah, baby, are you going inside? What? Are you going inside? You can go ahead, baby. And I think it wouldn't hurt if I hurried a little bit because it looks like we've got a storm coming our way, which is great. You can help water these things in a bit. I did go ahead and pop up some Hakana Chloa that was around the base of this tree because it can't take our full sun. And I really like Hakana Chloa and it's expensive grass to buy. So we are going to repurpose it. And then I've got a false bugbane right here. I just had one of those right around the base. So anyway, let's get these in the ground.
Oh, that's gonna look amazing there as well. I'm so happy with all these changes today. And here's a look from this side. We needed some height in this area anyway, and I think the light will be perfect. It'll get enough sun to color up nicely, but I think it'll be protected enough to not fry. We'll see. But in this area, you can't see it, but I do have Limetta hydrangeas here. They are not doing that great, so those will probably go away. And then what do you think of the that? Uh, is that a transplant? Yes. Really? Yeah. Nice. Kind of nice to have some height right there, huh? What? Do you think it might get too much sun? You want to know something? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I don't. In fact, I was just explaining that we grew caladiums in this area last yeah. year, and they did beautifully. Yeah. And you know what? Get stuff? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so I planted the Hakana Chloa that was around the tree below it and then there are the lungworts that I uh, transplanted earlier. There's ferns and hookahs up here. So I think with the flavor of everything else in this space it'll work and I think we've got a storm coming our way. Yeah, I think you're right. So I was trying to really hurry. <laughs> All right guys, the breeze is starting to pick up a little bit. I did plan on transplanting a few other things, but you know what, there are other days to do that and I feel good about what we got moved today. I mean, three of the big uh, plants from behind the gazebo area and then a few smaller ones. I'm not so concerned about the smaller ones, so I think the next uh, kind of batch of plants I wanna move are the two big cone boxwoods on the east side of the gazebo and then the other Japanese maple that was near this one right here near the pond um, so that that's not in the full sun one it starts getting hotter out here and it is starting to rain on me a little bit so anyway as far as transplanting goes I just tried to dig as big of a root ball as I could manage by myself and then in the transplant hole I filled it up with uh, water and I had biotone in there and then I just planted with native soil um, and then watered it in again overhead just to kind of settle the dirt to make sure there was no air pockets around the root ball that's really important to do oh my word the rain is starting up anyway um, I'm hoping that all these plants are very happy. Of course, we'll be showing you updates through the season. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'm gonna clean up my mess and get inside. Hope you guys have a great day. Bye.